All right. Um, hey, everybody. Welcome to Trust Relations, the podcast. I'm here with April, the founder of Trust Relations and the doyen of all things public relations. <laughs> and of course, we're joined by the wonderful Hamish, our marketing lead and expert in the space, who I like to call my marketing other half. Ooh. We're tackling some of the biggest topics in news and integrated marketing and learning from the mistakes that make headlines or sink brands. So join us as we have a chat about what works, what doesn't, and what we have to say about all of it. So Hamish, it's a new year and a new you, apparently. Oh. <laughs> For those not on video, Hamish no longer has a beard. Mm, that's right. I have shaved. Looks uh, like yeah. a very, he looks like a very different person. Yes. Young. <laughs> that's what you meant. I look young. Yeah, you look younger. That's right. He just yes, shaved yeah. 10 years off his face. Yes. Can you believe you're working with a millennial? I can't. It's amazing. <laughs> yes, well, that would be one of the topics today. But look, I do apologize for starting late today. I, I really do. I um, uh, was driving here and there was a, uh, uh, an accident. A truck tipped over. A cheese truck tipped over. Oh, so, was there yeah. cheese all over the road? Debris was everywhere. Really? Cheese on the road? Debris was everywhere. Oh. Uh, yeah, there we I go. See. I need is, to catch up. Wait, is this your dad joke of the day and that you didn't actually have a cheese truck tip over in front of you? You're on to it now. Oh, no. For everyone who, who is... doesn't know, April's not feeling well. And she's, <laughs> she's fighting another cold. And I think maybe her hearing's gone. I don't know. <laughs> Who knew that there's American cheese? I never knew there's American cheese. What's American cheese? I've heard of Swiss cheese and wait, this know. isn't a dad joke. This is an actual comment. No, this is an actual conversation. It's just very related. You didn't know about American cheese? What's American? Is it that bright yellow one? Yeah. Oh, the one that's plasticky. You can burn. <laughs> it looks like fake cheese. <laughs> is that the one that they put in a in a spray can, a whip a whip cheese? Yep. Oh yeah. But, but also, cheese. but that's slices chemicals. too. But slices, like it's like a very mild cheddar, but yellow. There you go. So, so this is is, is this the most exciting thing from Hawaii? Is American cheese? <laughs> <laughs> no, I had, okay. a, I had a really good time. I relaxed. I read. I slept. I ate and drank too much. I I did go running. I snorkeled. I Stand up paddle boarded. Uh, I walked a lot. Um, I did over about 25,000 steps a day, you know, so it was good. I mean, that sounds pretty good. How much weight did you gain? Yes, there's the extra question. I brought back luggage on myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, with that, should we jump into our news of the day? I, we should, although I should ask. Have you got any news? It's very rude of me to wind us up without asking you if you've got any exciting news. Well, I can't remember if last time we left off, if I had told you about the foster baby. Um, yes. Layla. Layla. And, she, and I was... Touch me you know, on my knees. Yeah, exactly. She does. Mm -hmm. I know. Uh -huh. I'm super, in, so, so in love with her. And she's oh, the look, most... It's Layla's first day in the snow. Look, it's Layla's first day eating out of a bowl. Look, at Layla's first time looking at me. I am obsessed. It's so cute. It's so she cute. she is the sweetest little thing. She's I think I told you she's a feral dog from Tuba City, which is a reservation in Arizona, a Native American mm -hmm. Indian reservation. And so what's funny is that even though she's terrified of people, she's upset. She's as obsessed with me as I am with her. So she follows me to the bathroom. She follows me back to my chair. She follows me to the bath. Like mm. she will not leave me alone at all. Now you should and tell everybody as well. You thought she was part coyote dog. I did. I did. And, and then tell them what she really is. She's 18 different breeds. <laughs> I've tried, I've tried to memorize this. Let's see how many I can get. 18% Pomeranian, 16% Chihuahua, 12% cattle dog, Australian cattle dog. Yeah. Australian cattle dog. Uh, yep. Okay. 12% Australian cattle dog, 8% Chow Chow, 8% oh. 8, 8 Poodle, both miniature and toy, Pitbull, oh, La please. Labrador Retriever, German Shepherd, Husky, Schnauzer, wow. uh, miniature Schnauzer. She's 
Staffordshire Terrier, like American American Staffordshire yeah. Terrier. There's oh gosh, I can't remember how many did I get through. Nine of the eighteen, ten of the eighteen. No, I reckon you probably got ten or eleven. Yeah. So uh, that's my that's excellent. my big my biggest news. It's good, and look, other than your health, everything's good, and we're ready to tackle. 2023. Happy 2023, everybody. Happy New Year. I know. It's very exciting. Yeah. So today's news story is about how Gen Z social media managers are the new CMOs. Yeah. That's interesting, isn't it? Now, it's to clarify, it's not saying that the social managers are the CMOs, but they're wielding influence like CMOs. Mm -hmm. They're really diverting and pulling budget. Um, and they have become forces to be reckoned with. Um, it's a, a very interesting article. Uh, it, it gives a number of different examples of people who are working for companies such as uh, Duolingo, advertising agencies um, like Wyden and Kennedy. Uh, and it, it's talking about the fact that most of these uh, social content managers are between 23 and 27 and how their native grasp of platforms such as TikTok has given them huge influence within the organizations because they're able to influence the audiences that the companies are trying to target. I think, look, it's interesting. I've given, I've given the intro. What, what have you taken from it? I mean, it's very interesting. I think that it's very hard to stand the pulse of culture today unless you actually are that young and have that much time on your hands, which is not to say anything about young people not being busy enough. It's just that obviously the older you get and the more you amass a family and all these other things, it's like you're, you're juggling a lot. But if you're kind of living your whole life on social media, of course, you're going to be more on top of the trends. You know, you're going to know that, you know, there's this, all this dance rage about shuffling, you know, like I didn't, I just picked up through context cues. I'm sure that's been going on for weeks or months now. Yeah. Welcome and I just, 2021 you know, April. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, I'm suddenly there, right? So, I mean, I think that there is something to be said for that. I think the obvious downside is that culture moves sometimes faster than brands should. Yeah. And I think if somebody that's a social media manager is trying to get the brand to stay with the times rather than stay true to itself. So, yeah, I was going to say this. Then you could end up, yeah, then you can end up kind of misstepping because you're going to end up going off on a bunch of, you know, tangential trends that that's the one thing that you have to make sure you don't do as a brand is let the social media managers take you too far off into contemporary trends rather than just sticking to your values and what matters to you in the long haul. Well, I think that's a really good point. I think authenticity has to be maintained. And the risk is if you are zigging and zagging to follow trends, it's very easy for you to potentially be distracted and for your brand to pivot the wrong way. And Mm. we've all seen before how a trend can turn nasty. Kanye West, if we look at him, or Yeezy, whoever he is today, he was at the top of the games. He was influencing social networks. He was influencing design houses. He was everywhere. And everyone was emulating and wanting to be like him. If you had been and you were doing it too closely when he, his star fell, it could hurt your brand as well. And the other thing that worries me about it is all these people are 23 to 27 and they have got moved into these positions of high influence. And they're the CMOs in air quotes. But mm-hmm. two things worry me about this. What happens when those people leave because the tenure of this generation in jobs is a couple of years at best generally that's a good if they are the voice of your brand and you pivot if they they move away and you force to bring someone else in and that pivots the feel of your who your brand is what does that do to your following and or if they go to your competitor are they taking people with them because the content looks the same so what happens there and the second thing is Mm. these people are getting fantastic at what they do they produce they write they direct, they star, they do all of these other things in their spots and they've become the sure. unpolished ads of the generation. But what do they know about the fundamentals of marketing? Sure, they may know that they have to stay on brand to the best of their ability, but do they have accountability for budgets? Do they know how to manage clients? Do they know how to talk to other departments? Do they understand the sales process or are they more about demand generation? 
not just lead generation. So they're, they're missing fundamentals. And as they get older and they're no longer staying current, mm. what happens to them? Are, are we going to see a large drop off of people from the marketing sphere because they don't have the skills? Or are we going to see the fall of other parts of the brand? Because these kids who are going to be earning hundreds of thousands of dollars in the positions that they're in for some of the brands, Taco Bell was one that I read there, they're going to be commanding large sums of money. And when they get into other positions, if they don't have those fundamentals that they need to be great marketers, they're never going to become the CMOs and then they're going to become disgruntled because they're not being paid the same as they were or, be, or they'll get fired because they're being paid too much and not producing results. What happens then? I mean, <laughs> that's the classic issue of, of getting overpromoted when you're young, right? Mm-hmm. And you end up, I've seen this a lot, people that are, especially people are really smart and they tend to be very well equipped to do a senior job for a junior person, mm -hmm. but there is no substitute for wisdom of years and experience. And so yeah. mm -hmm. a lot of times there just isn't. And I, I, I mean, I was one of these too, right? That was a very capable young person that thought I could kind of do the job of somebody much senior to me. And in a lot of ways I was right. And in a lot of ways I was completely wrong. And I think that that's one of the downfalls. You, you end up demanding a salary because you think, oh, well, I'm doing the job of a VP or I'm doing the job of an SVP or whatever it is in your head, or I'm doing the job of a CMO. I should be paid $200,000 and I'm 26. And then the problem is that you might get paid that because you're invaluable to the company but will you ever be employable at that amount of money at that level again? Because you don't actually have the street cred credentials or marketing know-how to actually pull off that position at a different company. So there is a downside to, you know, to that kind of over-promotion for sure. Is, do you then resist people who actually know more than you and create enemies? And so, and because these people, they're leading TikTok platforms. Mm -hmm. That doesn't necessarily mean that they understand LinkedIn. So can they be a social manager? Because those audiences are completely different. And yes, there is a strong argument that they're talking as 23 to 27-year-olds to 23 to 27-year-olds. Sometimes they'll be talking to younger people and these people will all grow up with them and therefore will we see the changing face of platforms like LinkedIn where what's professional will become mm -hmm. something different to what you and I are seeing it as at the moment as these younger generations power through and want to interact and interface in a different way. Does that mean that other platforms are going to need to adapt or is it that the people will need to adapt to the platforms? And this right. is a conundrum. Agreed. So I don't know. Look, I think it's interesting. I think we'll put the link to this in the show notes. Uh, it's a very interesting article. I think it'd be really interesting to get anyone listening to write in with your thoughts. See what you, what you think about this. Have a bit of a debate discussion or otherwise. If a Gen Z who we're riffing on at the moment, inadvertently, and you have an opinion, I think April would be fair to say we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we'd love we to. Someone yeah. On. yeah, agreed. Because I, by no means do I want to take a crap on generations from a great height. It's not my, my purpose. And I know that there has been, and we discussed recently elsewhere, April, about this whole thing of older generations <laughs> always seeing the worst in younger generations. And so much so that I quoted something to you then, I'll quote it again now, that children, the children now love luxury. They have bad manners, contempt for authority. They show disrespect for elders and love chatter in place of exercise. And as I told you then, that was Socrates who said that. And it's always the place of the older generations to seemingly criticize younger ones. As I wrote, though, in this article that I published many years ago, I used to do that. I don't now. I actually think that there's a lot of millennials, Gen Z. I think they have a lot to offer us. And the problem of older generations is not listening. So I'm happy to listen. Agreed. End of soliloquy. <laughs> All right. So we move on to our marketing conundrum of the day. Yes, please. So today we are discussing an inflection point for goats. Please quiet, quit these banished words moving forward, according to an article from NPR. This is a very, very funny one to me. So goats has become slang for greatest of all time. Mm -hmm. And I actually had a very funny run in with this acronym because I represent Arizona, which is a wildlife park here in Northern Arizona that has a lot of drive through animals that you can see, including bears and wolves and bison and mountain goats. 
and the mountain and the mountain goats had a baby and they were going to name the baby goat after goat tom brady and tom brady and serena williams are the parents i think wait is that right i'm trying to remember the the details now but they had like named the goats after goats and then the baby goat was named after another goat and they wanted to use that in the headline i was like okay this has gotten really confusing (laughs) very confusing incredible yeah so at any rate Trying to use goats in general, especially in the context of actual goats, not a good idea. But I think in general, it's a very, very confusing term <laughs> because it's just become a little bit overused. A little so, bit? It's the yeah. goat of annoying words. Pretty much. This is the marketing conundrum. So do we just get rid of this altogether? And are there other, you know, banished words like that, that should just exit stage left from marketing in general? It should be jettisoned. Yeah. Okay. So, so here are the banished words from a recent list created by Lake Superior State University in Michigan. Mm -hmm. They said, get rid of goat inflection point, quiet quitting, gaslighting, Moving forward, amazing. Does that make sense? <laughs> Irregardless, absolutely. <laughs> and it is what it is. This list is what it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, gaslighting, I'm very, I mean, that one really hits home for me because I'm sick of hearing about gaslighting. It's like it became all the rage and now it's overused. And yeah. It is an actual oh. thing that happens to people and has happened to me. And it's a horrible thing that I think overusing it actually takes away it's from be- the meaning of it. Like it, it, it sort of waters it down. It's become such common parlance in social circles to go back to our social that everyone's using it. And generations of people, my daughter included, they're using terms like gaslighting thinking they know what it means and just using it completely out of context. So I had a debate with uh, my dear daughter, Zavia, the other day. Love you. And, uh, <laughs> About like, gaslighting. No, she. I, we're having a discussion and I had a counterpoint to her. And she goes, oh, my God, you're just gaslighting. No, I'm just presenting a different argument. That's not what gaslight. Yes, it is. You disagreed with me. No. And she goes, this is what someone said. And she showed me a video of someone explaining gaslighting which was just so far away from what the actual term should be defined as that I had to sit it down and say, no, this is why everything you see online is not something that you should trust. And so I agree, some of these words, I mean, irregardless, I mean, I don't even know where to start with that one. Look, I've learned a new word today. And some of these other ones I hadn't realized were as probably prominent as they must be in the US. Quiet quitting. I didn't know that one. Inflection point, I know it as a phrase, but I didn't realize it was so used. And amazing, I've heard many times, many, many, many times. But yeah, there's a lot of words in there that I didn't realize were as problematic as they must be. But I think it's a wonderful list. And it's yeah interesting. I think it's interesting to see this list. It was where we yeah, originally in our first season had the idea for buzzword bingo, as you might remember. Yes, I do. And it came from something similar to this where that we were just so sick of acronyms and so sick of people throwing in of buzzwords. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this is where we got that original idea from. We used to get a secret buzzword at the start of each show and then try to catch each other red-handed using it. And so, which meant that the other one was trying to use the word without the other noticing. And the goal is just, yeah, like to expand our vocabularies and avoid the kinds of words that we're seeing in this article. Like Quiet quitting. Which do you know what that means yet, Hamish? I'm guessing that it's where you decide to quit a platform and instead of making a grand announcement about it, you just go. Ooh, I like that guess. That's completely wrong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that one would be so much better. But it's like it? such a it's like that. I mean, I feel like we're playing Balderdash. This is fun. <laughs> so quiet quitting refers to doing the minimum amount required of you by your job. And putting in zero more effort, time, or enthusiasm than absolutely necessary. Oh. And it's become a bit of a one. it's become a bit of a situation because it's actually 
it's sort of like part of the great resignation, but quiet quitting is obviously an alternative to that, right? Where you're just like, well, I'm showing up and I'll make them fire me or whatever. And it's almost worse than people actually quitting. Mm, okay. I did not realize, but it's, that's exciting. It's know. like, it, and it's Maybe not it's... that they're, it's not that they're quitting what they're required to do, their core tasks. They're just refusing to do anything above and beyond. Oh, well, anything outside no, I, yeah no problem with that one because my teams are always going the extra mile i mean that's good i and i don't have that either but it's apparently a thing that's happening so and do you know the origin of regardless you know do you know where gaslighting came from uh, in, in the common modern day usage or original uh, origin origin um, would that be where someone would be turning the gas light out so that you couldn't light your oven or something no that's also light? good also good gas completely wrong no pilot light is what i'm thinking so gas light yeah, completely where wrong. the gas light says that it's on but it's actually off and so you blow yourself up nope well i don't know the origin still no okay here's the origin so there was a 1938 british stage play called gaslight that was then converted into a film in the UK in 1940, in the US in 1944. And basically, this film like very vividly displays this form of manipulation. Are you reading this, by the way? Yeah. Okay, cool. Otherwise, I found you're it highly knowledgeable. Well, I already knew this because I've looked into this before because I was interested in it, but, and I have like an audio book on gaslighting, which talks about it. So at any rate, I knew about it, but I had to look up the details. And so basically the protagonist through a series of, you know, abuses and manipulation, slowly manipulates his wife into believing that she's going mad. So he does all kinds of stuff to make her question her sanity. Like he's using gaslights in an upstairs flat, causing them to dim on his own. And then she brings it up, you know, he convinces her that she's imagining it. And so there's all this, you know, kind of dark. Yeah. It's, it's a very, very dark film. So for anyone that actually wants to use gaslighting appropriately, I would recommend watching the film because then it was adapted into, because they did such a nice depiction of it, this very dark thing became sort of, you know, colloquial for that phenomenon, but it's not to be taken lightly because it is something that, you know, very, manipulative people do and and is very damaging to other humans and so it's so, not so you're something you should use a, colloquially, colloquially so you're saying that the correct yeah. usage of it would be more not that you undermine what someone has just said but it, it is an ongoing and habitual and undermining of somebody yes and you would need to do it purposely exactly. yeah right and, and to make that person feel like you're in control and that, and and that they're not, you know, sane. So I I think that, you know, it is good. I think in general, as marketers to keep in mind that yes, you want to be on trend, but once again, you don't want to fall so far on the trend that ends up being something overused or that you get so lost in cultural appropriation of things that you lose your own self in it, your own, your own brand identity. And it's a good article again, you can share uh, I didn't realize that hundreds of words and phrases have been banished by LSSU since 1976, and they received tens of thousands of nominations uh, annually. Anyway, so there you go. Good article. Um, Very good. And, I like that and one. Just, just to put a button on it. So I made Verizona change the headline of their press release to Mountain Goat Sires Verizona's First Mountain Goat Kid Just in Time for Father's Day and took goat out of it. Nice. But the dad, Tom Brady, and mom. Kidding. I was not kidding. The dad, Tom Brady, and mom, Serena Williams, were both named after the greatest of all time (parentheses goat athletes). I let them keep that in the in the first paragraph. Body copy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yes. Very, so you missed my joke about kidding. You don't kid. You don't. You don't kid oh, the best. Mm, I see what you did yeah. there. Yeah. That was it's funny. Like, I see that. Very punny. Yeah. <laughs> anyway so that is what happened um and then they had a social media campaign inviting people to name the that's always dangerous i think we've discussed that oh. 
where it we is had dangerous in Australia. except oh what happened again i think was it australia or maybe it was i've read about it in australia but there was a naming of a boat ferry and uh, the number one vote was for boaty mcboatface yeah i mean that's a good one that's it's a good example of the power of the people it's yeah it's also a good example of group think and group stupid <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow. Oh my god. Anyway. Yeah, I'm I'm excited by the thought of reintroducing buzzwords. So I think we should. So I know and it was in high demand from our mm. listeners. So mm-hmm. I think for this new season, we should basically just not keep a running tally, but just have a, a healthy competition to make it less confusing. But then I think for anybody who doesn't remember what this was, so basically we used to get secret buzzwords at the start of each show from our producer and then have to use the buzzword inside of a normal context where it actually makes sense and then try to catch each other using those buzzwords. And basically the goal was to expand our vocabulary and avoid these exact kind of words that are overused in the article. Mm -hmm. I think we should bring it back next episode, Hamish. I'm all for it, and okay. I'm also of the understanding of why you just want to keep it loose and free with no total and tally. I get I mean, because I'm always going to lose. No, you're not. <laughs> Although I, I did learn how to play dirty like you, so. You really did. Yeah. <laughs> I get I mean, Hamish mumbles. He waits till I'm distracted. So that's what you I, did. I'm, I mean, I learned from the best. Mm-hmm. So that's what's going to happen is I'm going to. Mm-hmm. I, I'm all for it. Thank you, April, for our first show. And thank you, listeners, for uh, coming back into 2023. Please uh, remember, you can catch the show wherever you like to listen to your favorite podcasts. Like this, one. like this one. Don't forget, if you subscribe, rate, and share the show with your friends and colleagues, it will help us keep this community growing and this content coming your way. But before we sign off, Hamish, <laughs> we can't forget about this week's offer code. Please, yes, visit the link in the show notes below and use Trust Analysis 23 as your code word for a chance to win a free Trust Analysis workshop for the first person to enter. New clients qualify in terms and conditions apply. You can catch more in the show details. Can't wait to see you next time. Cannot wait. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Goodbye. Oh, no, he did it again. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> Goodbye. He still can't do it normal. Ow. I don't know. But yes, I had a really good time. I did, good. I did manage to break my finger. Hamish. Wait, so, why don't you have that like in anything? You just have a broken uh, finger hanging out like a gorilla. I, literally. <laughs> it looked like a gorilla <laughs> finger. <laughs> it's all purple <laughs> and like swollen and like yeah. literally looks like you got a gorilla finger. I've just been thinking and I've realized there is a word that I'm going to put forward for vanishing on this uh, LSSU list for next okay. year. Okay. And I know it's a real thing, but I think it's just, it's everywhere. ASMR. Sorry, what? Have you not heard of ASMR? No. No. Oh, what does it actually stand for? Not so for I'm it. out of it. What is this? A feeling of well-being combined with a tingling sensation in the scalp and down the back of the neck as experienced by some people in response to a specific gentle stimulus, often often a particular sound. So there's all these What circles YouTube. are you running in? Uh, it's across YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. It's on Reddit for ages. And it's uh, people setting up channels talking like this. And there's a lot of dark, eerie lighting around. And they drag. What? Really? And so I'm adding that to the list. I mean, looking up. Just, You're trying to justify yeah. your weird social media behaviors. Is that what's happening? Uh, 